Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and in this week's project, I'm going to give you a glimpse inside on how I made a really nice rustic desk for myself. Yet, I do hope this project does stay in my family for years. It's got some epoxy inlay, very understated, and it's also got two hidden compartments. So, if you want to see how it all comes together, join me and let's get it done. Hey guys, so like I said before, thank you so much for joining me. Let's just jump into this project. This slab I bought locally here in Northeast Florida, but it looks pretty clean right now. I did flatten it using a router sled that I did make in a previous video. So instead of going over that here, I'm gonna link that down below. My choice of resin is Total Boat's two to one ratio resin. It's a clear, super strong resin, and I'm using that to fill the voids in this tabletop. You see here, I've cut a few pieces of Baltic birch to size. I'm making the actual apron that's gonna be underneath, the frame that's gonna be underneath this desk. And I'm leaving this piece here because this is gonna be the drawer face that's gonna come out of the front of the desk. Also, really simply, you can see how I'm installing it here. I'm just using pocket holes to assemble everything together. A little glue, clamping pressure, that's all you need. And this will end up being a super strong bond as well once the glue sets up. Now you can tell here I've got everything in place. I'm using pocket holes again to go ahead and join all these pieces together. Coming up with a little kind of makeshift way to get some clamping pressure on this thing. As you can see, the legs as well, those are made from Baltic birch too. I simply stacked those together, layered them together about five pieces, and I've got a process on how I made those too. So I've got a video where I show that. I'm gonna link that down below as well. But there you go. There's one side complete, pocket holes on the other side. As you can see, it goes together pretty quickly. And there we go. We have a table base. It really is that simple. And I get overly excited when a plan comes together, as you can probably tell. So I've made some marks, 45 degree angle marks actually, at each of the legs. I've got a little cross cut sled here that allows me to cut 45 degree angle pieces. And I'm doing so, these are gonna be eight inches in length and they're gonna have 45 degree angle bevels on opposite sides. You can see here where they're gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and attach these into the actual table base after I make a few marks. And you'll see here, I'm gonna countersink some screws. And then once I get it in place, of course, after a couple of sessions of sanding. I need to make a small jig. These are two 45 degree angle pieces here. And all this is for is, is going to allow me to really get really nice clamping pressure on the edge of the table. You can see there that the clamp slips. So this little piece here is going to go in. It's going to allow me to get really nice even clamping pressure on the 45 degree angle piece that I'm going to use. That's initially going to be used to take the lag bolt that's going to attach the leg to the base. As you can see here, everything looks like it's going together well. Four screws are gonna be installed to keep this piece extremely rigid. And once I'm done here, I'm gonna drill a quarter inch hole right through the middle of that 45 degree angle piece. It's gonna allow me to then attach a five inch lag screw. And this is by far my favorite and preferred method to install legs on any table. All that, this is being a desk, it is a very super strong hole. Okay, one quick note about these legs. Yes, I'm not making these legs for this table, but I'm using them for this table. I made these legs in a previous project. I thought I was gonna make an entry table with a slab. Turned out these legs were just way too big for that project, so I decided to use hairpin legs and make a coffee table for my kids. Yeah, my kids have a live edge hairpin leg coffee table. It's, it's freaking awesome. So anyway, these legs I made in another video. It's linked below the first line. You're gonna find it there. However, I'm gonna do a quick overview on how you make tapered legs. All right, guys, hold on to your hats here. This is going to be fast. So this is Baltic birch layered together to make four by fours. You take an angled cut on the bandsaw, reattach that piece, turn it 90 degrees, take the same angled cut again, and you've got yourself a tapered leg. Repeat this process on all four sides, making sure you orient the cuts the right way, a little sanding, and you're good to go. Again, check the link down below if you want to see how these are made in more detail, and let's continue on with the build. So now that the legs are in place, it's time to make a couple of pieces in which the drawer slides for the desk drawer are gonna rest up against. These are gonna be completely parallel to each other, making sure that they're even from front to back. And after those are installed, I'm gonna hand sand to kind of break all the edges on the bottom of the piece. Now this is my finish of choice for this. I wanted to actually spray paint this black, but 
I decided to use General Finish's Pitch Black, and the reason being is, as dark as this is, you can actually still see some wood grain through it, and I think that's a really nice touch for this. Going ahead and use a foam brush. I'm slathering it on. I'm not gonna wipe off too much here, and I think that black looks gonna look great with this live edge slap. Turning my attention back to the actual live edge slab, the epoxy has done a wonderful job filling in all the voids. It has stabilized this piece, and now with a quick sanding and then dusting of mineral spirits, we're gonna get all that dust out of there. We're gonna flip this piece over and make a few marks using, yep, the actual trough for the router sled. I'm using this because, one, you could also use a straight edge, but I have this built and it makes it really easy to make straight lines that I can reference. And I'm gonna take out about a quarter of an inch or so and again, I'm not gonna make a crazy design. I'm just gonna do a very simple geometric pattern. We're gonna take one line down the middle and then we're gonna kind of make a 45 degree angle. And then as you can see here, another 45 on the other piece. But here's the deal, I've got some chip out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this sled to the actual, or actually a straight edge to the edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of that edge off, giving me a channel to put some more epoxy right there as well. After a light sanding, it is now time to mix up some Total Boat 2-in-1 Epoxy. Again, I have added some charcoal colored pigment from Black Diamond Pigments. I'm gonna link both companies down below if you wanna get yourself some of this stuff as well. So in a space dominated by river, wait, I can't say that, um, flowing body of water tables, let's just call them that, um, I figured I would do something a little differently. So this geometric pattern of a couple of lines, three lines, of charcoal pigment instead of a aqua colored pigment. Hey, it was something I came up with and honestly at this point less is more or I guess you could say less is better and um, my wife agreed as well. So she actually wanted to come out and help me with this. She decided to take a little uh, tin penny nail here and, and put a little geometric pattern in the, in the surface. It turned out great as well and I appreciate that darling. Now here's the piece I'm going to use for the actual drawer face. I know it's absolutely massive, but there is a cool piece right here that I think is gonna go well. So I'm gonna break it down here with a circular saw. This again is a piece of cedar. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that, but the piece of wood you're watching me install here, the drawer face and the top is actually cedar. Um, and that is, hey, that's gonna be beautiful. After I've got it cut to rough length, I'm gonna cut it to final dimensions here on the table saw as well length and width and I'm gonna go ahead and take a 45 degree angle and kind of put an aesthetic choice on here of course you don't have to do that but I think it'll look pretty nice doing a slight hand chamfer with the sander you can see that adds a nice little touch to it I've got the back installed with Tyvek tape and this entire piece is gonna be covered in total boat epoxy I'm gonna use this as its finish Simple drawer construction using three quarter inch Baltic birch and some quarter inch plywood. Simply gonna put this piece together with glue and brads, essentially making a frame and then putting it back on the frame as you see. I am gonna enlist the help of a few squeeze clamps as well just to help this happen. And there you go, a simple drawer. Now, time to bring the base over. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking there. Either way, here I'm gonna attach the drawer slides. I'm essentially gonna leave them on the workbench using the workbench surface as the reference mark to keep these drawer slides parallel to each other. And then I've gone ahead and built a simple little jig here, which is gonna space these out just right for the need of the desk installing these the exact same way, clamping them shut, and installing them with the hardware provided. First attempt at putting the drawer slides in, you gotta push really firm on your initial install, but then you're good to go. So I've turned my attention to the drawer face and I know I was gonna use the epoxy as the final finish. However, I've decided to sand that down to around 220 and I'm using a different product here. It's called Halcyon Clear. I've used this in the past 
It's made by Total Boat. It is a water-based clear coat that you essentially flood three coats on an hour apart and then you're good to go. No sanding required. So it turned out beautiful and you're gonna see that result here just in a little bit. Okay guys, now it's time to take this Tyvek tape off to see if we've done a good job and everything looks pretty darn good at this point. It's real sticky though. So I've gone ahead and loaded up my random orbit sander and I've put on some 100 grit sandpaper. This is only an aggressive grit to help me really plow through that epoxy getting down to the surface of the wood. After that, I'm gonna go through the grits to 120 to 220, up probably to about 320 as well. And as we all know, sanding is everyone's favorite pastime. In fact, you can even sand your projects while having your morning coffee pretty much on autopilot. Check this out. Okay, all kidding aside, we're gonna go ahead and take some mineral spirits and get all the dust off of this. And at this point, you can really see the grain pop and the epoxy come out looking really nice, really vibrant. But yet, yeah, that charcoal epoxy is very understated, which in this project was the goal. Now, here we go with some more finishing techniques. I'm gonna bring in here and explain what I'm doing. All right, so I've applied three coats simply within one hour of each other. You apply a coat, you wait an hour, lather, rich, repeat three times. This is what we got. Now, per manufacturer's instructions, you take a Scotch-Brite pad and you sand it down and this is the next step. So let's go ahead and do that now. Because this desk will be displayed in a communal area in my home, which my kids will have access to, I'm putting a coat of paste wax on the surface. I'm gonna apply it liberally and then buff it out. And you can see there, the shine is gonna represent basically a waterproof membrane. Good thing I did too, because this is already installed. And the other day, my daughter was playing with her watermelon slices and her orange slices on the desk. And yeah, I'm glad that paste wax was there. Okay, now it is time to start assembling the pieces I need to make these secret compartments for this desk. I'm taking some Baltic birch, I'm sanding them down thusly as you can see here. I'm going to attach them to make a little tray. Now there's a small lip right there. That lip matters and I'll explain why in just a minute. But for now we're going to take these and we're going to clamp them in place and we're going to screw them in place underneath the desk. You can see here I'm just using a countersink bit and attaching them with some about one inch screws. With the other side of the desk tray installed just like that, you are now getting a look at the desk from the top with the top off of it. And at this point, it's time to make the boxes that are gonna rest in those trays. I'm using some cutoffs from the drawer face that I made. This is again, pieces of cedar. And I'm trying to find the most live edgiest pieces I can find. Is that even a word, live edgiest? Well, it is now. So, and the camera died as I was installing it. But either way, you can see me installing the back on this piece. And that is essentially going to be a tray that is going to nestle itself into those other platforms we made. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and sand it down, breaking all the edges, giving it a nice, even feel. I always like the feel of a nice hand chamfer on most pieces. But there you go, guys. That's the piece. Uh, I made two of them. A little spray lacquer to finish them up. And you'll see them be installed just in a little bit. I'm using what we call figure eight fasteners for the process of installing the actual desktop to the desk bottom. And you basically make a recess with a Forstner bit and install the figure eight fasteners just like this. Using a 3 8 inch Forstner bit, I am making some recesses for the screws that are gonna be used to attach the drawer face to the actual drawer. I'm gonna quickly clamp this in place, only in the middle, which is gonna help me kind of go back and forth to make sure it's level. Screw in a screw once I know it's there, and as you can see, that's what the recess is for, hiding that screw in place. So before I put the top on, let me illustrate exactly how these secret compartments are gonna work. Really simple, nothing to this, but they're gonna be there and only you will know that they're there. So if you build this for yourself, don't let them know you got the inspiration from me because they will know where you keep your valuables. All right, guys, so I'm gonna bring you in the home just for a second. Gotta show you what's going on. You ready to go? She doesn't wanna do any more work. 
So check this out. The secret compartments are up under here. You saw me build them, but just in case, you see how easily accessible they are. There you go. And they're made from the same wood, of course. They have the same live edge look. And this is now my sanctuary to do my editing, to do my working. So thank you guys. Appreciate you joining me for this. One more feature I added was a three-pronged USB cable here. This is actually a happy accident that the cords can come out through the live edge cutout while you can charge them and use them at the same time. And also, this is the desk at night. Typically, this is when I use it. There's the cicada lamp. If you haven't seen that, that's linked below as well. And this is my space to do what I need to do for this channel. I love it. Well, there you have it guys. That was a big project for me. Absolutely fun to build and I think it's gonna be in my family for years to come. Also, if you liked it, you didn't like it, something you would have done differently, let me know in the comments below. I love talking to you guys down there and having conversations as well. I'm gonna give you a quick maker board update. On YouTube, I'm featuring Kyle from DIY Buildouts. Well, you gotta check him out. He does unbelievable practical furniture, things for the home, and he's just getting started. I think he's got two or three videos up at this point, and they are way better than they should be for him being brand new to the space. So check him out, subscribe to his channel, and leave him a comment telling him, telling him where you found him. Also, on Instagram, I gotta shout out Devin Richter. He is the wood vicar on Instagram, and you wanna talk about somebody who has got some cutting board techniques dialed in, check him out. He does a great job as well. Well, there you have it, guys. That's gonna do it for this week. I'm always gonna invite you to subscribe to the channel. I've got a few more videos over here playing as well. And again, thank you so much for joining me. This has been A Glimpse Inside. My name is Chris, and I'll see you on that next project. Take care.